two five-card hands, and uh, they have to be in ascending order. The back hand has to be a higher-ranking poker hand than the middle hand, and that has to be uh, a higher-ranking poker hand than the three-card hand. So when all said and done, you got 13 cards out there, your best hand in the back, your second best hand in the middle, your worst hand up top. Right, and then someone in Finland, I'm told it was in Finland, remember, during the winter, it's dark there. So you know how you have funny dreams or nightmares? Well, these people have very long periods of darkness, okay? Somebody said, well, that's easy when you get to see all 13 cards at once. What if you got them one at a time? You wouldn't know which cards were going to pair and things like that. It'd be a lot tougher game. And, and yeah, it is a tougher game. Uh, to give you an idea how tough it is, it's tough to just put a hand down one card at a time and not foul it. And by foul, what I'm saying is you end up having a bigger hand in the middle than the back, for instance, then your hand is fouled. It's not legal anymore. And, and you lose a scoop. In this game, it's six points for a scoop. Uh, as, the way the scoring goes, you get a point if you beat uh, your opponent on the top, another point if you beat him in the middle, a third point if you beat him in the back, and if you beat them, all of them get a scoop. You get an extra three points for a total of six. So what you're saying is regular Chinese poker, you put all 13 cards down at once. In open face, you end up putting down essentially one at a time. And if you make a mistake and don't have that ranking, best, slightly worse, worst at the top, you foul and lose everything. You lose six points. You lose what would be a scoop. And then, because it's hard to know what's going to be coming, whether the full house is in the, in the cards for you or a flush or whatever, you might start going for a flush, get four spades down. You never hit the fifth spade. You're probably going to foul your hand. So those are, uh, you, the royalties in open face Chinese are different than the royalties. What, what's a royalty? In re well, in regular Chinese, people know royalties are like quads in the back and, or, or better, quads or a straight flush in the back, full house in the middle or better, and trips up top. You get to see all 13 cards at once. Well, you're not going to generally get hands like that in open face because you're going one at a time. So we scale down what the royalties are. All you have to do is make a pat hand in the back. A straight in the back is worth an extra two points. A flush in the back is worth an extra four points. A full house is worth an extra six points. Quads in the back is worth an extra ten, very rare. And a straight flush is worth an extra 15. And they even give you an extra 25 for a royal flush. Uh, I've had one, okay, uh, in the time I've been playing, which is a lot this year. In the middle, if you get any of those pat hands in the middle, it's double. Very rare. You know, you're not going to have it have, have it very often. Although they, uh, you know, we also play trips in the middle, which is kind of hard to get, is worth two, uh, two extra points. Up top, anything's a pair of sixes or better. It's, it's not that easy to get. A pair of sixes is worth one. A pair of sevens is worth two. A pair of eights is worth three. Just one point all the way up. Three deuces, well, if sixes are one, sevens, eights, nines, tens. It goes up in ascending order. Queens, kings, aces are nine. Three deuces is worth ten, and you keep going. I've never had trips in the front uh, in the time I've been playing. It's like a really big deal. You go out and have a party. Well, I mean, part of the reason why you would never have trips in the front is because uh, you might be able to, to achieve ships, trips in the front, but you have to then beat it not only in the next level and then beat that hand again on the bottoms, which makes it so difficult. So what you're saying is that this is a game based on points, and there's two ways to earn points, which is you can beat your opponent hand versus hand, and you can also make these royalties, these super high hands. Yeah, we're in the middle of a hand where we're playing heads up, but you can play this game with two people, three people, or four people. When you play four people, all the cards get dealt out. and At the end, you know exactly what's left in the deck. Uh, I prefer heads up or three-handed because a lot of times you play with people four-handed. When they get to the end, they go in the tank trying to make sure they know exactly what the card is. Okay, Too slow for you, four-handed? Too slow for me, four-handed. Um, now, uh, the one other thing I haven't discussed in open face, at the beginning you don't start with the first. You get the first card, you wouldn't know where to put it. So what the Finns decided is give the guy five cards so he has a little hint of how to start and then go one card at a time from that point. And that seems to work out to be a pretty good game. Uh, when I first played it, it was introduced in a poker game. We were playing forehand. They threw it in. See how tough it is? I fouled my first three hands. I was very frustrated, and I decided I'm probably never going to play this game again. But then everyone That started, didn't happen. Well, everyone started playing, and if you're a gambler and everyone's playing it, you got to play. So what I did is I went home, and, and I started dealing some hands, and I started playing a lot with my girlfriend. We wanted to get better at it. And I found out very quickly, we don't even know how to set the first five cards. And, and I came up with a typical five cards that you seem to get, where you have a pair, some big cards, and a small card. And even the, 
question of where do you put your kickers with the pair? Where do you put your pairs? Well, what I decided to do, and this is how I learn all games, and I hope you, know, you guys out there do too, is you, you find who the good players are, and you, see, you ask them questions or see what they're doing. And like they, poker legend Mary Greenstein. Well, uh, uh, but I wasn't a good player at this. And you try to uh, you know, then uh, put that in your game and incorporate that in your game. So I was in Vegas. This was right after the World Series. And I just asked Ron, who are the good players? And nobody knew the answer to that question. Because for everyone who said someone was a good player, someone else told me he was a live one. Well, now Jason Mercer just won the Open Face Chinese Tournament we just had. Is he a good player or is he a live one? He was one of the few people that I was told was a good player. And not surprisingly, he, he ended up winning the tournament. So, yeah, I, I, I think he's a good player. All right, let's get into some of the gameplay here. What you said is you start with five cards and you have to set those five cards. If you're a Chinese player, poker player who gets all 13 cards, you'll normally put a pair of eights and a three in the back. You're a pair with your smallest kicker. Maybe try to make a full house in the back and a flush in the middle or something like that. But, you know, that's too much to hope for in this game. So my first question is, and I'm just going to leave this while I talk. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you what happened. So I went around. I couldn't find a consensus of who the good players were. And then I'm not going to name some of these names, but somebody told me this guy's really good, okay? And then I noticed some young Finnish kids came into town. Remember, this game's been played in Finland for a few years, and then it got over to Russia for a couple years after that. So... The Finns, I think, are better, and the Russians are next, and then the Americans are behind them, okay? Well, what happened is these two Finnish kids came in and played the guy that I was told was probably the best player, and they beat him for 80000 like it was just hand over the money. So uh, Strong. So I learned don't play random Finnish kids at this game until you get very good. I don't play random Finnish kids at anything, honestly. Okay, So and, and, and again, they have some Russian guys up there, and they're still ranking. Still don't play the Russians. Yeah, it's still, uh, you know. Still too good for me, okay? But, you know, as I get better, and I'm now good enough that I can pretty quickly see, because remember, the cards are face up, who's making mistakes, uh, at least at the level I think. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's kind of like backhand. And you get to see the plays in front of you, and you can say, that guy's doing some boneheaded things. Although early on, I thought people were doing some really bad things, and then I found out, no, I was the one doing the bad things. I've still got this hand here with... Barry made a mistake. What? An ace, jack, and a three. Joe, how would you play it starting out? You don't have any information. You don't know what the live and dead cards are. I went around and asked many people how to play this, and I got about five or six different answers. I know how to play it now, but I did. But uh, what? Can you take a shot at it? All right, I'm going to take a shot at it. Here, here's what I would do. I because we're. I might play it a little differently if we had big money on the line. But here's what I would do. I actually got that as a as a possible play because the guy said, you know, Royal Flush is worth so much. Yeah, why don't you start going for 25 points? But you get a Royal Flush once a year. Yeah, that's not that's not really my thought process here. My thought process here is that uh, I don't want to put my eights in the back and my ace jack up front and then get another ace or a jack and then have and then have a pair. I'm I'm on my way to fouling at this point. So at least if I do it this way. Okay. Well, what I did is I took it home and I started out like this. I thought. A jack, you know, in this game, just getting a non-fouled hand with a you know pair, 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 two pairs, pretty good hand actually. I thought maybe starting out with this, I dealt out a hundred hands of this. Initially, I didn't even know if I pair the ace, is it putting me in too much of a risk? I know a lot of beginning players either play too aggressively and they foul their hands all the time. You should foul about fifteen percent of the time. I think is about the right rate. Um, I play against some people real bad and they foul forty percent of the time. Um, now, I was worried, and then I play, play against some people play so face, they end up with, like, no pair, no pair, or pair. They don't win very often, but they don't foul. They're playing with bad, bad players. That was one of my first questions when I was learning to play this game. You cannot play simply not to foul. You will not win, right? Right. And so I started out playing a bunch of hands like this, and I found out pretty quickly it is worth gambling. If you get the ace right away, pair it. Then you can't get a pair of jacks. Remember, a pair of jacks is worth a lot. It's worth six extra points. So I started out like this, and I thought this was the right way, but people gave me different solutions. Someone played it your way, said go for the flush, and the pair of eights, a middle pair in the middle. Um, and then I eventually found out there's no question now what the right play is with this hand. And Here we go. Here it comes. This is the right play. And it for a regular Chinese poker player, you're not used to putting – weird kickers in the back that are bigger than you know some of the other cards. can i take a stab at this is this because you want to make your two pair here and then you're safe if you make an ace in the middle yeah well one of the premises when you're thinking out your hand is you want to think what happens if i catch a card that pairs me is it going to be good for me or bad for me and it ends up if you do things like 
put the jack in the middle that's higher than your pair, when you get a jack, you're already scrambling. Because now if, if you, you need to hit make, to not foul. Because you'll, you often get yourself in a position where you've got a pair bigger than your back pair in the middle, and so you can't have two pair, two pair, because your two pair will be higher. You don't want to set yourself up where your two pair in the middle would potentially be higher than your two pair in the back. So by putting the jack here, I'm either going to have aces in the middle and jacks up uh, in the or back. Or three eights. Well, maybe I'll get three eights. I'm assuming when I start with two eights and a jack, it will develop to at least jacks up. And I'll play accordingly for there. Where if I played it like this, I'm going to assume that I'll end up with eights up. And now I can't ever make two pair in the middle because it's going to be higher than that. So this is actually the right way. It may not be obvious. Uh, now, one other thing that people threw into this game, a monkey wrench they threw in, is they realized, you know, it's really hard to get big pairs up on top. You should get something really special. And they came up more with, than royalties. More than royalties. They came up with something called fantasy land, where if you can get queens up top and a non-fouled hand, you go to fantasy land. And in Vegas, that means girls come over. No, it's not that. It's not that. It's not what you were hoping for. What no, it it's not. Is on the next hand, you get all thirteen of your cards at once. And you get to play them. Now, that's a huge edge. You're going to probably win. I think it rates out to you win about 12 points a hand in that situation where you get your cards up front and the other guy's playing normal open face. And so it's a really valuable thing to go for. Now, one, let me give you a hand here, these five cards. Now, normally the way you'd play them is bigger flush in the back, try to maybe get two flushes. Remember, you get a flush in the middle and a flush in the back. That flush in the middle doubles. It's worth eight plus the four in the back. Normally you would play this hand this way, but if you're playing fantasy land where queens up top or better are important, queen up there? you actually would play the hand starting out like this. And what your goal is, is queens, aces, flush in the back, or, well, you're going to say, you're going to say, well, you only have two to a flush. I can, well, even jacks and nines in the back. You'll see aggressive, open-faced Chinese players put garbagey looking things in the back that you say this guy is clueless and i thought a lot of these people were but they're not necessarily clueless because if you can make queens aces and jacks up that hand in points if it scoops the queens are worth seven the rest of the stuff isn't worth anything a scoop means 13 but you're in fantasy land the next hand which is an equity of about 12 points that's worth about 25 points that's huge so you're going to be going for something like that so do you think we could maybe just play out, like, one hand uh, a certain amount so we can just kind of go through the process of how to actually play it? We can. I don't know if they can follow. Do we have time for that, or are we, we at the end of the tutorial? Um, I think it's good for people who haven't necessarily played before. Okay, well, we'll do it, and they can cut it off if they don't like it. Okay, here we go. We're going we're gonna to blow through one hand really quickly. At least so you can see what's going on. And, and Joe I'll, most likely will follow his hand, but, you know, it's Joe. So Barry's going to tell us why he's doing what he's doing, I, and he's going to tell me why what I'm doing is bad. Okay, that's good. That, that's okay. Good I've already given you a couple lessons, so maybe you're going to play perfectly. I'm not, we're not playing fantasy land, okay? I can't afford well, fantasy all land. All of a sudden in the middle, you're changing the rules. No, people Once I see my cards, I can't, I'm, we're going to not do fantasy okay, land. Well, this is a good start. Three flush, and maybe you get a two flush. It's hard to get a flush in the middle. A lot of times going for it, you end up following your hand when it doesn't develop. But that's a good start. I have a three flush also. Now, it ends up, you can figure out mathematically that 55% uh, of the time, if you're first to act and you put a three flush in the back, you'll make the flush. They actually have apps to figure these things out already. That's boring. So Joe is, uh, we both have the same back. His front, our middles are about the same, although he happens to have a two flush. Okay. I have a ten of clubs, which really doesn't do me any good. And I'm going to put a it. Choice. It's a choice. And, and I oh. actually don't even know the ten up front to Let's keep the flush going or not reasonable. I usually go one, one time to keep okay. the flush going. King of spades. Now, normally, if you have an ace or a king, you put it in the middle. Because if you put it in the top, you may never be able to beat that. A king up top is, beats about 50% of the, the hands up top. In regular Chinese poker, a pair of threes is the middle hand, but in, in open face, king something is probably the middle hand. So it's too dangerous to put that king up front. I'm going to put it in the middle. And I'm happy that it's a spade. I'm taking one of his outs away. All right, now I just got to bite the bullet here, give up on the flush, and go for the pair of sevens in the middle. Right, which is re so you're playing fine. I've got a six. I don't want to crowd my middle too much. I'll put it up top. Don't crowd the middle. Do you guys got that? Well, don't crowd anything too much if, or the, the top. You, you put stuff up at the top too, too early, you're dead. And now you just have no leeway on where you put your next cards. Now, notice our hands look terrible if you're a regular Chinese poker player. 
Because the hands just don't develop. We may end up with no pair, no pair, no pair by the time it's over. Fair. I'm going to gamble here. Okay, let's see. Okay, that is probably a bad play because it's, it, if it works out and he catches two more spades, that's really good because now three sevens is worth a lot. It's worth two extra. The flush, he's probably going to scoop me. But here's what the problem is and what Joe doesn't do because Joe hasn't played a lot. I've got three spades in my hand. Barry, there's like 14 more spades left in the deck. And at this point, we could figure it out. We could have an app. But he is now a pretty sizable dog to make his flush. So it's probably better to put it there because at least then he can make a pair of queens or eights to beat the sevens because my hand's not that good either. So you don't want to give away a foul to me. Just hurry up and deal me my next spade, please. Oh, no. I have an ace. I can't put it up top because I might not beat it. I'm going to put it in the middle. And right now, as soon as I saw Joe make that play and I force base, I'm thinking, I want to not foul my hand. And I'm going to scoop him. So he's right now really got to catch a spade. And he didn't. I caught a club. Well, that's nice. I may make mine. But I, even if I just made a pair in the back. There's virtually no chance I don't foul. Joe is probably going to foul. Okay. I need running spades. And actually, at this point, that was another bad play. Because you should have put it here. And I'll tell you why. Because if you catch a four, you put it up here and you catch a four now. or, or seven, Yeah, then I'm never going to beat it down there. Fill up and you can't beat it. So you want to put it there for two reasons. One, you'd want to put it there so you can't make a full house. And the other is because, remember, jacks or tens are worth extra bonuses. Six for jacks, ten, four or five for tens. Why not give yourself a chance to hit that, that little piece of magic, too? But How much was this for? Uh, you're going to owe me big time. Oh, here's my card. Club? No. Uh, I'm gonna just All right, we've got to deal out right the rest now. of these. We've got to take it to the dinner break. Let's okay. find out what happens okay. here. Right now, I'm thinking, okay, he's, he made a pair of threes, but he, you're dead. If you put it there, you're already dead. You have to put it there. and hope I hit my club. I'm in good shape. Go ahead. Spade. Yeah, you're already dead. I'm making sure I don't I don't foul my hand. I have queen high ace. High. You're already fouled. What happens if you foul also? I can't. Then we would tie. But yes, I got, but we didn't. But we didn't. I have a flush in the back. I won 10 points. Four, six for a scoop, four extra for the flush. Joe. If I could play people like you at this game, I would not play poker again. Well, you can't play people like me at this game. Maybe I was just sandbagging. Uh, people like you don't have money to play at the right stakes. It's sad, but it's true. You would have made you would have made three threes in the back and pair of sevens in the middle and just and just lost instead of gotten scooped if you hadn't put the three sevens in the middle. I would have got I would have lost instead of getting scooped. Lost, but not as much. Fascinating, Barry.